so excited to have you here. So glad to be on board. Hi, I'm Mindy Silva. Welcome to the WikiTree Challenge, where in one week, our team of volunteers will work together to uncover as much as possible about the family history of a notable person. Are you excited to hear what we found? I'm very curious to see what you guys have find out. Tessa, your week was led by team captain Karen Lowe. Maria Lundholm earned the most bounty points. Thomas Conline was the MVP of the week. And of course, we had Mindy, our challenge coordinator. WikiTree researchers from all over the world worked around the clock, combing through records, newspapers, wills, and much more to find stories, photos, and 547 new relatives for you. Here's a little glimpse of what that collaboration looks like. And the fact that uh, we found that census record that gave Olson, like that doesn't narrow it down by very much, but yeah. uh, that was pretty astounding to see. Yeah. So, so we, know Olson, that, we believe is yeah. her biological name. That's her then, biological um, father's name. The person that I found who went to America, a couple of his brothers also went to America and he is on that maternal grandmother line. He's Good. a nephew of the second great grandmother. I have found him in some household records. Um, with the kids and so forth. And the biggest issue I'm running into, I'd like to create his profile, is that I can't find any definitive evidence of his uh, patronym. So, so words, I can I can solve that for you because I have his marriage record, which lists him as Erickson. We decided we could uh, make a um, header at the bottom called ruled out, and then we just move the whole record down uh, there. Yeah. I'm back at... 10, uh, what is it, eight or nine generations now on her mother's side. I'm just working on the Foster family right now because th they seem to have stuck in one place for a very long time. Every single member of this Vol family that I've seen so far. It was an incredible week, you guys. I had so much fun. And we actually had researchers from England, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, and the US. So they worked around the clock on your branches. We found a number of occupations. And this is something I like to find because to me, it kind of brings the person a little more back to life you know, um, instead of just looking at a whole bunch of, of different names. But we did find um, an alderman. We found bookkeepers, the Maton men were bookkeepers at the mines. We found a crofter, uh, usually a tenant farmer. We found a district judge on the Peterson line. We found definitely some farmers. We found, yeah. a, we found a forest warden, which took a little bit of discussion to um, figure out what the translation exactly was on that. So um, that was fun. Uh, several innkeepers, a lawyer, a locksmith, um, several pastors, a school teacher. Okay. We found on the Moore byline, we found ship's commander. We found several soldiers. Uh, and, you know, I know... Um, <laughs> There was a requirement to serve, but we found several that uh, stayed in. And we had a vagabond and a thief, actually, Anders Olson. So, uh, okay. and, yeah, and then a watchmaker. So, you know, we did find a lot of interesting people on here. And it just, it was fun to see where all the stories went. We're going to go ahead and start with an ancestor that you didn't know when you were younger. And that's Berta Viola Vall. I don't know how much you you know know about her. She she died so young, and I, I all I remember of her is that she had extremely long hair, which was not common back then. Long women, all, all the women in Sweden had very short hair, and she had like to her waist. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, that's about what I remember of her, and that she was very very kind. One of the initial things we found out was that she was in a foster home. Her mother's birth date was on her birth record, which was really odd. I know they're really good about putting, you know, birth dates on everything, but they yeah. didn't, they did not put her mother's name, but they did okay. put the mother's birth date and they did not list the father anywhere. So, you know, right off the bat, people were intrigued and they were wanting to find out, you know, the, this mystery. And it turns out that she was taken in by foster parents, Johan Ernst Wall. So that's where that okay. name came from. And Ida Augusta Anderson Wall, when she was less than three months old, they yeah. raised her to adulthood in their family. So those were her parents. Um, 
she had a foster brother named Klaus Eric, who was about four years older than her. It looks like they took him in about the same time. This is the St. Matthew's Church where she was baptized. And I just think that's a beautiful church. It really is. Really yeah. beautiful. The family went from there to Orslot, to Vidixa, to Denmark, and finally to Laga. And that's where Berta married at the age of 23. And yeah. <laughs> and. And then two months later, gave birth to her son. So um, her foster father had died six years before and her foster mother one year before. So neither of them were actually there for the, for the marriage. In an interesting twist, Berta's foster mother, Ida, had birthed a son, Carl Johann George Anderson, when she was 22 and put him in foster care. So I'm not sure if you know that's what... Um, caused her to, to be a want to be a foster parent later, but she had had to put her own son into care. And then she later married Johann Ball, who Berta was raised by. When Carl was 15 years old, he reunited with Ida and the family. So that was really cool. He actually went back, found them and moved in and he lived with them until adulthood. Okay. Oh, that's cool. We haven't forgotten about the birth of her birth mother. They did stay busy and then combed through the records. And unfortunately, there were 88 women born with that birth date. We thought, oh, we have the birth date. It'll be great. <laughs> and we looked and on that day, there were 88 <laughs> Swedish women born. And that's only looking at the ones that were still alive when Berta Bolt was born and not married, you know, because yeah. we, we figured she would have said who the the father was or whatever if um if she had been married to somebody so that left a really daunting task to take on and then they did finally find a record saying her surname was Olsen when she was born so okay. yeah and it turns out that the birth mother had professed to a priest that um her surname was Olsen and, you know, unfortunately, at that time, the priest made a note of it, but not of the birth mother's name. But, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the records, it says, uh, you know, it leads us to believe that her biological mother was Signa Katrina Olson. And she okay. would have been about 29 when Berta was born, unmarried and a maid. So, you know, she couldn't take care of a child on her own. And then Berta would have been about 54 years old when Signa died. And it's unknown whether the two actually met, you know, if Berta ever met her uh, biological mother. But there's some thoughts that she may have just because the mother did finally go to the priest and say, um, you know, this is this is what happened. Going on yeah. your mother's side, it says, Let's see if we have this right, with her father, Hans Vitalis Odelby. Yep. And his father, Andreas, to his mother, Sarah's Anders' daughter. And then to her father, Anders Olsen. Well, Anders was born in 1798 at Ofer in Havero. He was yep. the son of Olaf Anderson and Sarah John's daughter. Um, he grew up in that same parish. He married Maria Neal's daughter in 1825 in her home parish, and they live. I'm probably saying that location totally wrong. Over Turing. <laughs> I know exactly where it is because we're there every summer because we have a summer house after our relatives, right in the woods next to lake, and it's where they took the the the, the cows and the pigs and the hen. They, they spend the summers there. You know uh, that that's what I know about them. But I didn't know how far back. I know that my grandpa and grandma did that, and and then my mother and father used that place as a, like a summer house. You know the place where you have the cows during the night. Uh, it's not there anymore. They made a guest house out of that, etc. Uh. So now that my parents are not around anymore, so. So, uh, my family goes up there during the summer now and it's really nice on all those places you you just mentioned yeah one of the researchers maria had said that she said he's going to recognize a lot of these i said i don't know anything about sweden you know and the geography she goes no he'll he'll recognize a lot of these places yeah. <laughs> he'll know where they are i do i do they were listed in the 1835 those household examination registered as having four children in the home those same children were listed in the 1845 register Registered. But since then, Olaf had married Gollan Hander's daughter. They had two sons, Olaf and Niels, who both drowned in November of 1855, right after that household examination was done. 
and um, they drowned at the same time. So I don't know, you know, uh, some of the researchers were trying to determine if it was the ice was kind of melting at that time of year, you know, if the lake wasn't totally froze over something yeah. that happened, but they, you know, they weren't little kids. They were, um, I know the one was like 23 and the one was younger than him, maybe 19 when they drowned, but. Yeah. A wild guess is that they were probably working, I don't know, they, they might have been working with the, they, they transported, you know, big logs in the rivers, you know, from the, oh, from the okay. mountains down to the, down to the ports in the sea. So, and I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of men died doing that work. Uh, so it, it was, uh, it was a very very risky task to to get those logs down to the to the to the uh, what do you say harbor is that the name that maybe? yeah yeah but uh, i don't know i don't know but that might that might have been the case uh, or as you say they might have drowned i don't know yeah it makes you wonder though huh i mean that does make sense that they were doing a lot of logging in the area they had two daughters which survived Anders. They survived their father. Um, they were both married by that time. So he got to see them married, but they had actually yeah. lost three sons because the first one named Niels died less than a day old. And this one is going along your father's side to his father, Carl, and then over to his mother, Holda Regina Lundquist. Then to her mother, Clara Lavisa Peterson, Okay. And then to her father pair. So we kind of did a lot of hopping to get out there to him and another yeah. pair. So we had two um, pair of Pearsons. Now the first one was born in 1778 in North Sunda. And what we found interesting about him was his occupation. He was an innkeeper and a, is it a Shishby? So this inn, along with a parish rectory and a poorhouse, were three really long established buildings and considered focal to that area. Uh, the management of this inn actually stayed in your family for at least three generations that we found. There may have been more. And uh, the first pair lived there with his wife, Anna, and his sons, Pear and Carl Frederick. Here is him with his wife and sons, Pear and Carl but I have the household register for that. Now, his death was um, also a little unusual as he died from a high fever and he was only 35 years old. His son, Pear, died at the age of 46. He hung himself. Mm. So yeah, we had a lot of tragedy in that part of the family. Um, and it makes you wonder what all hardships, you know, they encountered being out there and trying to keep that in running and raising a family. Your direct ancestor was a daughter of the second pair named Clara Lavisa Peterson. And she was just three years old when her father died and then 12 okay. when her mother died. So, um, you know, she really um, wasn't, wasn't raised by her parents. No, I mean, that's rough. Who, who took care of her? Well, by the time her mother died when she was 12 her older siblings were in their early 30s to mid 30s i believe her oldest brother was like 35 so you know there was a, a little enough of a spread between the kids and you know her being the youngest that she had the older siblings and i imagine that's who cared for her you know we didn't find anything that showed she was put up in foster care so the younger you know kids must have stayed with the older kids now we were looking at this this inn once again because we found so many of your family members there and this town had prehistoric origins Oshutsby is a central town that contains the minister's residence, poorhouse, and inn. These have filled the function of the parish center near adjacent to the nearby North Sunda Church from the 12th century. Years after the first pair lived in the inn, there was a fire in the courthouse of the neighboring town where the records of four different counties were kept. The entire building burned down except for the records in the basement. Those remained intact. They moved them to the inn until such time as a new location could be built. So we wouldn't have had these wonderful, you know, household records and stuff if that hadn't happened. Um, no, just that, really a bit incredible. Of luck in the, a bit of luck in the middle of the, the chaos then that they, right. they could keep the, keep the books. Here we have Olaf Ersen Blomberg, your fifth great grandfather. 
and we went through your father again for this to his father yeah. to Carl's there to Lavisa and then we went way out there to Olafers and um, blown by your once again that's your fifth great grandfather he was born in 1723 he enlisted as a soldier in 1743 and he actually served until 1780 in the Bolster Road. So he was part of the Hundra Harad's um, company of the Uplands Regiment. And as a soldier, he took on the, the Blombay surname. People would take on an entirely different last name to be identified. And I guess when they were in, in military service, if they died, the next person that came in and filled their slot had the same name. So the name went with the rank or the role that they had in the regiment. Yeah, I know that uh, back in the day when the, uh, I know that the, if you were a soldier, sometimes the, the army named you. So you get it, you get right. a name from the, from the, yeah, from the arm, the Swedish army gave you name that, that also happened sometimes I know. Maybe that, maybe if there were like five guys that was named Anderson or Svensson, maybe they, well, you can't have, we can't have one more Anderson. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta give him another name. I don't know. But. Their origins can be traced actually back to the 16th century. This wasn't disbanded until 1957. They were one of the original 20 Swedish infantry regiments men mentioned in the Swedish constitution of 1634. This is what your, you know, great, 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 great grandfather was in. Yeah, cool. In 1739, a battalion of that regiment was transferred over to Kamenogard County in Finland for a while. And then out in 1757, they went to Pomerania after the equipment was supplemented. This was really cute. Uh, the details, I love the description. Uh, they were suited up with short leggings, white scarves, new rifles of the 1747 model, new socks and shoes, <laughs> five new ammunition wagons, and six bread and tent wagons. Okay. Yeah, and the soldiers were all instructed to have their hair well powdered and their mustaches well set up. Okay, oh, that's awesome. This was the church that Olaf and Marga married in, and this was the first couple I had seen uh, from this particular parish, and that was in, I'm not sure how you say, who's be Lankundra? Yeah, it's not far from where I am right now. I've, I've, I've seen this church. I've never been inside the church, but I've seen it. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 kilometers from here, maybe. And this one's a third cousin. So we kind of traveled out, way out, and we looked on your father's line to your yeah. seventh great grandparents were Lars Eden and Sarah Margarita Filmera. And one thing that we like to do is see, you know, who else they are connected to. So they have a common ancestor with your third cousin, Johan Eric uh, Mar Marburg, born 1829. Johan Eric was born in Hedvig, Eleonora. He resided later in Stockholm. And this was the steamship captain. The okay. ad that's, that's there is, the, and actually one of his passages in 1883, from what, you know, we were reading, not many immigrants went from Sweden to America by way of steamship prior to 1860. But after that date, it happened more and more, and it became really a common way of getting there. And, you know, at which point thousands of Swedes migrated to America annually. Yeah, I mean, the, in the... I think it was uh, one out of four million Swedes emigrated to the States. So, I mean, that's uh, one fourth of the population because there was starvation, rough winters, bad summers. Yeah. They, 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 were, they were starving so the, and they had no hope. So they, they were looking for a better life over there. So, uh, and I mean, that's a lot of people, you know, and most of them ended up in Minnesota and uh, Dakota and those places. Your particular family here, he may have taken them there, but they didn't actually migrate. And here we have a census record with Johan and his wife, Maria Gustafa, and their three daughters in Stockholm. 
also in the home were Carl Gustav Jan Soderberg, a foster son, as well as Hildegard Johanna Lundgren and Christina Elizabeth Olaf's daughter, both were maids. And he was pretty well off. So, you know, that's who most likely was just helping take care of his family. And this is actually a painting of the steamship that Johan commanded. Super. Really cool. Yeah. Now we have Pavel Henriksen, and this is even further out. I'm telling you, we just, we were having so much fun with it. Everybody just, we just kept <laughs> wanting to do more and more. We actually made it out to your ninth great grandfather on this line. So we went uh, through your mother's line for that to her father, Hans Vitalis Olobai again, and to his father, Andreas, his mother, Sarah. And then we went way out there to Pavel Henriksen and his mm -hmm. wife, Mar Margarita Lara's daughter. He's one of the oldest ancestors on your branches now. He was one of the oldest ones we found. He was born in 1614 in Snow Bear in Havero. And his father was born about 1589. So, yeah. yeah, really old. Pavel married Margarita Lars' daughter, and they had three known children. And the longevity, fairly common in your factor, despite those few that we had that died kind of young, uh, he lived to the age of 75 in a time limit. That just really wasn't common. And you know, they said Havero, it has been a, a prosperous parish with plenty of hunting and fishing. Tools were forged at that time from iron ore picked up in the bogs. And research on the people of Havero is easier in some locations. As for 300 years, the only way they had to get to the nearest village was to take a boat across. My grandpa and uh, grandmother on my mother's side, they're, they're buried in that very church. Oh. Or in the grave, yeah. So I've been there. It, it's a beautiful church, and the, the surroundings are spectacular with Holmsjön, the, the, the lake uh, just behind that church, and it's, it's a really beautiful place. This is a 1689 death record for Pavel. And, you know, just once again, really incredible to see how well preserved this parish register is. For yeah, that, that, that's really wow. I know. Super cool. 1689 and this one is on your mother's side to her father Hans Vitalis again they found a lot on his lines but we went to yeah. Rita Han's daughter this time to her mother Marta Ayer's daughter and then over to her grandfather Jonas okay. uh, Beberry he was born in 1771 in Berg Sweden he started his family with his marriage to Marita Anders daughter in 1802 in Raton. Jans and Marie had seven children, all born and baptized in that church. Before that time, Jans had enlisted as a soldier with, a, here's another one, with the Ovakin Company of the Jomplons Regiment. This service went from 1792 to 1823, so he stayed in for a while. And this one had its origins in Anger Ma Monlons in metal pads. Yeah. And this regiment was raised in 1646 in what was then the newly conquered province of Yomplon. He would have joined the regiment shortly after the end of Gustav III's Russian War. He was active during the Finnish War of 1808 and 1809, and he also served in the campaign against Norway in 1814. So he was in some major, you know, skirmishes yeah. there. Yeah, really. This was their regiment flag. Their motto was, for Sweden's glory, for Sweden's power, over mountains, over valleys, Jomplons hunting. Okay. I just want to take a minute to thank all the people that made this week so successful. We had our WikiTree researchers, uh, our regional experts, which were our Sweden experts this time. They were amazing, uh, really friendly, really knowledgeable. Had a lot of fun working with them. What do you think about everything we found? Yeah, it's amazing. It's really, really fun.